Let's begin. So we are going to revisit the proportion. Uh, there is some important information we need to know. One is that proportion is a statement that shows two ratios are equal. Now it's important because we can use a proportion to solve missing value problems that has a proportional relationship. So we have seen this problem P and Q before. They were littered at the same time but were burning at different rate. Each of them is burning at a constant rate. Now when candle Q has burned 10 Nm, candle P has burned 16. When candle Q has burned 35, how many Mm has candle P burned? Now that is the question. Now we can solve it in two methods. One is we take the ratio 16 divided by 10. P over Q is same as X over 35. Another method is we take the 35 over 10, both of them are for candle Q, and then equals to X over 16. And this one is the burning rates for P. So if you see, we can solve it in two ways. Let's set up the proportion in two ways. Now, but what is important is in each case, do you know what does each ratio represent? If you don't, that's where we need to improve our understanding of proportion. And even if we have understood what each ratio like 16 over 10 represent, we must be able to explain why the 16 over 10 is equal to x over 35. Now, as a teacher, we should be able to explain these two questions or answer these two questions. Now, so let's take a look now. Then. 16 over 10. The ratio 16 over 10 has a value of 1.6. Then, can you explain the meaning of 1.6? Now, if you look very carefully, Every time Q burn 10, P burn 16. That means every time Q burn 1 mm, P will burn 1.6 mm. So that's one way of explaining. Now if we were to look at it graphically, now let's, because we are going to com connect this to algebra, so we can represent each candle as a line representing the length burn versus time. The blue line is for candle Q, the red line is for candle P. Right. Now, can you help students see the 1.6? It's 16 over 10. But what does it really mean? So one way is to first look at what does the slope of each line mean. Like, for example, the slope of candle Q. What does that mean? You can see that the slope for candle P is deeper, right? Now, but however, the burning rate, both of them represent burning rate. The slope burn represent burning rate. But do, can you tell what is the burning rate? The answer is that we can't. The reason is because from the time it was lit to the first moment, the number of seconds or the number of minutes, the time it, it is not given to us. Nevertheless, we can represent the time by T1. So T1 in this case is an unknown. Then the burning rate for candle Q is 10 over T1. And the burning rate for candle P is 16 over T1. Does it help? So each of them is a burning rate, but because the T1 value is unknown, so we don't know the burning rate as yet. But however, we can relate the two slopes. If we take the burning slope of candle P divided by the burning rate of candle Q, you will get this complicated looking fraction, which you can simplify to 1.6 over 1. So what it really means is candle P is burning 1.6 times as fast as candle Q. So 1.6 is also relating the burning rates. That means the slope of the line P is 1.6 times the slope of the line Q. That's how you can also interpret the meaning of 1.6. So slope of MP is equal to 1.6 MQ. All right? Now, let's connect this to algebra then. So what we have been doing is just for one specific case, 16 over 10 equals to X over 35. We can use this proportion to solve for X. This is in the middle school when they learn proportion. But in algebra, the relationship between the burnt length of candle P, which we represented by P, and the burnt length of Q, it can be at any point in time. It can be at this time or further away 
or in general, it's just P and Q, right? So the ratio P over Q is always 16 over 10. That's the relationship. All right. So you can see how this is the, the uh, middle school math, and this is algebra, where P and Q is related by this equation P is equal to 1.6 times Q. All right. Now we can also solve this problem using the second method where you use the proportion 35 over 10 equals x over 16. Again, can you tell what's the significance of 3.5? 35 over 10 is 3.5. What does this 3.5 represent in the context of the burning candles? Let's take a look again. When candle Q has burned 10, candle P has burned 16. So what is this 3.5? If you look, 20, 32, 30, 48, 35x. So can you see the relationship between 35mm and the 10mm? What it really means is 3.5 refers to the number of groups of 10mm in 35mm. That means there are 3.5 groups of 10mm in 35mm. That's the meaning of 3.5. Graphically, we can also see show the 3.5 this way. 16 mm, 10 mm, right? The height, the height. So the height is the 10 mm. So another 10 mm will be another 10 mm. By the time we reach here, it's 40 mm. But at this point, it's 35. Do you see there is 3.5 groups of 10? Let me help you. You know, 10, uh, the second group is the third group and three and a half groups of 10 mm. Likewise, because they are burning at the same time interval, P also have 3.5 groups, but it's 3.5 groups of 16 now. So 16, another 16, another 16, and 3.5 groups of 16 will give you the answer. All right, with that, I, that's all I have to share for this video. Thank you.